A robot dog with RPG strapped to its back demoed at Russian Arms Fair. Now, we've all seen the Boston Dynamics robots, the humanoid versions of robots doing parkour, and, of course, the robot dogs. There's been videos of robot dogs with, like, automatic rifles strapped to their back. Uh, so seeing an RPG strapped to the back of a robot dog makes sense. I mean, if they can strap uh, an assault rifle to the back of a robot dog, why not a rocket launcher? Uh, it's just, you know, they sell these things to the public as, like, we're no longer going to be putting your, your boys and girls in harm's danger. Right? That's how they sold drones uh, into the military. It's like, well, we're not going to have manned pilots bombing people. We're going to have robot-controlled planes bomb people. The problem is we're still bombing people. Just because you're not putting citizens, our citizens or soldiers in harm's way to do the bombing doesn't mean that we are ending human life on a massive scale. Uh, usually for the reasons of resources. And uh, it's just, it's scary. It's scary knowing that we also have a lot of AI stuff going on. It's scary that, you know, a lot of these things could easily be hacked. I mean, everything is hackable. Everything is hackable. So there's really not a whole lot stopping somebody from hacking a robot with an RPG strapped to its back and sending that out into, you know, a, a metropolitan city. You know, we're going to start seeing robots. I mean, police departments are going to start getting robots. One I mean, you want to talk about an industry that has a ton of funding, the police departments. And on top of that, they, they're having problems recruiting because the police are widely known to murder, maim, disappear, injure innocent citizens on a regular basis. So people don't really want to be associated with a basically government-funded terrorists. Uh, so I could see them in you know the next 10 years start implementing robots into the police uh, budgets, having robots patrolling uh, poor neighborhoods, having robots target people who have a certain complexion, you know, just programming in racism into the robots to attack uh, people of color, attack people that look like they want their targets to look like. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, there's also, like, you know, the idea that there will be a potential nuclear attack either way with Russia or China. I mean, that's, that's been something that they've been pushing to scare people for generations. And it's back. You know, I, I don't know how that helps anybody uh life in america sucks you know like th the people the citizens of this country are primarily treated like livestock we're paid garbage uh housing and and medicare and groceries and gas everything is constantly growing in price but we're not paid anymore uh, we're, we're, we're pointed at and judged and told we're lazy for not working five jobs in order to barely scrape by a living. It's just like, it, it's, it's a, a shitty time right now. And, uh, to have, uh, these kinds of, uh, weapons of war being strapped to robots, uh, that can just be programmed. You don't have to deal with humans. Because a lot of times humans, uh, there's humanity. <laughs> and when humanity is involved, sometimes it's hard to convince humans to kill other humans. 
Uh, but it's easy to program a robot to do it. Way easier to program a robot than it is to program a human. And, uh, you know, programming these things that can, that they are completely expendable. I mean, the government doesn't care if, if your boy, if your children die at war, they do not care. Uh, they'll care even less that a robot gets killed. Although I guess property is protected more in this country than people are. So they may be, who knows how expendable they are, but you know, it's a, uh, it's a bummer. It's, it's, uh, I, you know, I'm glad I'm getting older, <laughs> you know, cause I, I don't see a future where it's like, uh, uh great. You know, it, it's like, we're t the, the longer the timeline goes on, the further we get into future, the 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 gap between a dystopian future and a utopian future uh it really it really seems to be leaning one way versus the uh, i don't really see much progress towards utopia as much as real strides towards dystopia uh you know aside from a small group of wealthy people who live a lavish lifestyle free of any kind of uh, laws <laughs> really no th they have very few worries in life uh aside from those that small group of people that are able to live that kind of reality uh the rest of us seem to be uh shooting headlong towards more of a, a mad max type of a reality and uh, it's just kind of a bummer. It's kind. Of, it's like it's all of the scariest movies combined into one. It's like zombies with all these viruses that are going on and all of that. We have Mad Max kind of things. We're like, you know, I, I, it's just like all the worst movies uh, of like horrific outcomes uh, seem to be combining into a Voltron of of our horrible future that is awaiting us. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.